before they had ever finally got 14 days he said it was two weeks 14 seemed like it took forever for them to get that part in here uh, for us to have electricity again something we take for granted every day get up in the morning flip switch come through put your uh, coffee in a, a, a automatic coffee drip machine and and got to have electricity all the way through. We didn't have to have all that whenever I was growing up. If the electricity went out and the water went off, we went outside and pulled it out of the well. Yeah. We built. I'm telling you, we built fire in the kitchen to cook on, and the coffee pot sat on there with one of those percolator things on the top. And, and 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 but now we just take things so for granted, and mothers get for taken for granted the same way. Billy Sunday said. Try praising your wife even if it frightens her. <laughs> Amen. That's how much we take them for granted. And uh, we ought to say something to encourage them and help them. And uh, I, 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 I'm doing better. I really think I am. I'll tell you what, whenever I'm not, I hear about it. And uh, if you've got your Bibles, turn with us to Luke's Gospel, chapter 34, and see what the Lord has for us here. Talking about mothers and and things that relate to mothers, what better illustration could we pick today than the mother of our precious Lord? Amen. Uh, the Bible said in Luke 1 and 34, said, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I was talking, thank you for standing for the reading of the word. Talking about the mother and godly examples. Now, this mother was called by God to submit completely to his will. Are you helping me here? Right. Amen. Now, the best that Bible scholars and people who 
search out things, can, can figure out that uh, Mary was probably no more than somewhere between 14 and 16 years old whenever that angel visited her. Now, that seems hard for our minds to comprehend today when you look around at your little daughters, amen, and to think about her being married at that age and, and having a child. But Mary said, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. This woman, young woman, was completely submissive to God's word and to God's will in her life. Yeah. Hallelujah. She never wavered one time from that submission. Hallelujah. She was living the fulfillment, if you will, of the prophecy of Genesis 3 and 15 when God told the serpent that the seed of the woman shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. She was living in that prophecy right then, whenever all the way back at the beginning of time as far as mankind was concerned, that was made. And every generation as that was looking for that to happen to them. Every woman in Israel was looking for that to happen to her. But one day, an angel came to a little a girl in an obscure village at the time. And God called her and she submitted to the will of God. Amen. Are you helping me here today? And you let God place a specific call on a young woman or a young mother's life today. And everybody starts taking notice and tongues start wagging. Amen. But just simply be submissive to God's will today. Hallelujah. I'm satisfied she was nervous. I'm satisfied she was as nervous as I am right here today trying to preach at a special service. Amen. But she was committed to God. Hallelujah. She's a mother worth imitating, if you will. Amen. She was not perfect by any means. Now, Catholicism has her lifted up today to where she can forgive sins. Mary could not forgive sins in that day. Neither can she forgive sins today. Wow. Amen. Mary, amen, matter of the fact, even though she was the mother of Jesus, she wasn't perfect. No. Come on. You ever think about that? No. She wasn't perfect. Lord, I'd like for you to help me if you would. Oh. God. Praise God. God. You, Hallelujah. You, now, Jesus was called, uh, uh, invited to a wedding. And several went. Mm -hmm. He was there. His mother was there. Mm -hmm. We know the story. They ran out of wine. Yep. And I'm not going to go into any details about that. Other than simply they ran out of refreshments. Yeah. Are you helping me here? Right. Amen. And she came to Jesus. Yeah. And told him just simply, there are one. Mm -hmm. And he said, woman, what have you got to do with me? It's, it's not my time. In other words, mama, don't get me involved in this. That's not what I'm specifically called to be doing. Amen. Wasn't it later? Oh, uh, no, it was prior to that. He was already, I believe, already started his earthly ministry, but he, he, he absolutely refused whenever uh, 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 Satan said, if you're hungry, turn these stones into bread. He refused that. You think about this. But because his mother put him on the spot. He did that that day especially for her. Hallelujah. She put him on the spot and he did what she asked him to do. Amen. Even though it was outside of what he was actually called to do, had she had a perfect knowledge of his ministry, she probably wouldn't have asked him to do that. And then her being a mother and waiting on him, she probably might have. Oh. Amen. But nevertheless, she was not perfect as far as that goes. Right. Amen. Later, later, whenever Jesus was preaching and teaching and a uh, multitude was around him, somebody came to him and said, your mother and your brothers won't talk to you. 
They want to pull him away from what he was doing. Again, if she had had a perfect knowledge of what the will of God was for her son's life, she would not have interrupted what he had to say there that day. Amen. But Jesus told them, he said, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Those that do the will of God. Yes. Amen. Sometimes a mother will have so much pressure on her to be perfect. <laughs> Got to be the perfect mother. Amen. You made mistakes in the past. You're going to make mistakes again. Amen. Are you helping me here? Amen. You're going to have to pray through on decisions that you made in the past. You're going to have to pray through on decisions that you're going to make in the future. But the main point of the whole thing is, is to get right back to where you can be submissive to the will of God when God talks to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talking about being perfect. Now, you look over Proverbs 31, and you can see the passage of Scripture there. And if you ever looked at a perfect woman, you're going to find one in Proverbs 31, or a picture of what one ought to be. But then the Scripture said, who can find her? You look at it. Who can find her? I mean, who can find a woman that never sleeps and always works? It looks like it's that way now a lot of times with some of you, especially whenever you've got small children at home and, and Sister Kim's been through this homeschooling and Sister Leslie is now. Amen. Seems like you're constantly always on the go. Amen. And then it goes on to say, verse 14, gives us the impression that she can actually manage a fleet of ships, got a, 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 a farm that she manages, got a staff that she manages, she cooks, she cleans, she homeschools her children, yeah. does all these things, and it looks like perfect, she sows. But again, who can find her? Absolute perfection. Sister Esther said she wanted to be perfect in the sight of God. She's telling us she wants to walk with integrity in God's sight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Are you helping me here? Yeah. Praise God. When we desire to be perfect before the Lord, we desire to walk before Him with integrity. Yeah. Hallelujah. We desire to walk before Him complete. As far as our salvation is concerned, amen. But there's going to be mistakes in your life, mama. Amen. Sometimes your children are going to bring it up and this, 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 and this. Amen. But just keep standing for God. Right. Yes. Now, not too many women can stand by like she did. And the angel announces the birth. Christ is born. She sees all those miraculous things happen. And, and throughout uh, uh, his early childhood years, uh, uh, infant and toddler years, the strange things that she pondered in her heart. But somewhere, somehow, she saw something out of him in his adolescent years and young man in his 20s that convinced her that he was able to turn the water into wine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. But as she watches all these things unfold in the life of her son, and she's standing at the cross, heavy, heavy, while he dies in agony. And no doubt, no doubt, as Sister Kathy was talking about the widow of Nain, a lot of the things that went on that you couldn't, that, that, that we didn't see that weren't written, well, that weren't written about. Amen. But don't you know, Sister Kathy, she was standing there, if you will, just begging heaven to roll back and stop that living hell, if you will, that she was having to endure for the time. But she couldn't see that three days later, amen, he was going to come out of that grave victorious. Hallelujah. She was able to watch the entire plan of her son from infant all the way through into adulthood, into his ministry, to his death, resurrection, that no doubt standing there 
when he ascended into heaven because she found her way according to the book of Acts amen into that upper room and was there when the power fell upon the church because in the beginning she was submissive to the will of God real quickly real quickly amen a mother's love never never diminishes it never diminishes Sometimes our children go through divorce. Sometimes they go through disease, death, and harsh words. But whatever that child goes through, that mother is right there. Right, right there. Daddy may turn his head away. Amen. But mama will be right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you helping me a few minutes? I want to use one more illustration real quickly. And I'm going to let us... Pray. Over in 2 Samuel, we find a woman named Rizba. She was a concubine of Saul. Now, that means she wasn't his legal wife, what people today would call a common law wife. Even the children, in fact, in those days, Brother Harold, were not part of the inheritance that belonged to the women that he was married to. And then in, in, in a situation like Saul, uh, had not God taken away, taken away, she was Saul's concubine. I believe I said Saul. I hope I didn't say David. It wasn't my intention to. But uh, in Saul's situation, the anointing was taken from him and given to David. But had Saul continued to live and Jonathan had lived, there's probably not a doubt in my mind that Jonathan would have been the next king of Israel. But God saw, saw fit to put David in his place. Amen. And so this woman being Saul's concubine, and after the death of Saul, she had an affair with Abner, who was the head of, of Saul's army, the captain of his host. And I'm not getting out of line here. I've just simply looked up the definition of Rizpa, this morning. Now I've already had some things in mind to preach on here today, but this morning I looked up Rizpah, looked up her name, and it has two spellings in the Hebrew. And, and under the one spelling it gave her what her name meant. And uh, I'd like you to help me just a moment. It just simply meant a hot stone or a live coal. Now, this woman had something about her life that attracted Saul to her. And it must have been more than just a mere passing uh, uh, a phase because we later find that she at least had two sons by him. And perhaps there could have been some daughters that was not recorded. Are you still with me here a few minutes? Amen. So this woman with all the things that were around her and all the things that was going on. Later we find in, Sam, in, in, in Samuel's writings that uh, 2 Samuel 21 that uh, there was a famine. There were some people that Saul had done bad. And there was restitution that had to be made. And the restitution, as long as I don't understand a lot of things other than the fact, brothers and sisters, it takes a death and the blood to satisfy some sins. And that's the way it was for Christ. If that's what that meant, then I have no other idea unless somebody, and then there don't be any problem to find somebody more intelligent than I am. But they were going to slay seven of Saul's sons to get the drought be ended and so on. Rizpah had two. And when Michael, Saul's daughter, was taken away from David and given to the other man, she and David never had any children. But she had five, if I understood right, by this man. And those seven sons of Saul were taken and hanged. And Rizpah made herself some sackcloth on a rock. And she put it out there. And she stayed right there by those rotting, decaying bodies 
until the drought ended and rain fell. I tried to look that up, Brother Steve, and see how many weeks, days, weeks, months went by, and I don't think I could find anything. One commentator said that it was perhaps at least a couple of months that she stayed out there while those bodies rotted. She kept the ravens and so on, uh, 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 the vultures and things away from those boys' bodies until they had completely decayed. Amen. They was paying a debt that they didn't owe. They was paying a debt that belonged to Saul's uh, a debt. Amen. And just like a mother today, that son could be facing trouble or that daughter could be facing trouble and that mama won't turn away from it. Amen. Are you helping me here? I'm about to feel the presence of God. She was faithful right on through this. Amen. And she uh, 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 was faithful with her love and her patience to do the task that was at her hand right then. I preached on this, no doubt, many, many times. I thought I'd touch on it a little this morning before I close. But a lot of the bittersweet trials, I'm telling you, bittersweet, can I just go ahead and say a lot of the most bitter trials that we go through with our children, especially Sister Kathy, from a mother's perspective, she tries to look at it that that child didn't do any wrong. And if you have a problem with that, then that tells me that your child, either you don't have any, or your child hadn't grown up yet and got in trouble. Are you helping me here a few minutes? There's a preacher, and I won't call his name. I preached for him numerous times. Preached revivals. I got called at least twice a year to preach revivals, one in the spring and one in the fall. The church is still there. Pastor's gone, and many, many, many that went there, the older folk are all gone. Last time I was there, Brother Steve was there. There wasn't a good handful at the church, and I don't know what they've got now. But uh, totally different congregation, totally different people. But I went there on a regular basis. Yes. And the pastor had a son yes. that got in trouble all of the time. Yes. All the time. Yes. All the time he was in trouble. And I couldn't quite understand. I just couldn't understand. He sold his house that he just about had paid for and put his money up for attorneys to represent that boy to keep him out of prisons. Are you helping me here a few minutes? And his mother would be trying to sleep and she'd be praying for that boy and, and be laid down and about to go to sleep. And while she was laying there, the Lord would just like Show her the vision. Which, what place that boy was at? Yeah. Where he was at? Yeah. And she'd walk in the tavern or the place where they were serving their drinks and be up way up in the night. You know, they're still serving there before the closing times. I, I, I've been told, and she said it too, that she walked in more than once, Brother Bill, and grabbed him by the collar. And dragged him out. God. And the man that owned the place of proprietor would say, You cannot bother him. He's he, he's here. He's my patron. He, he's buying from me. She said he might have. But that's his last one tonight. He's going home with his mother. And nobody else said anything. You'd have to know her. She'd have probably belted one of them that stood in front of her. She, the Lord showed her where the boy was at. And she went and got him. God. Faithfulness. Yes. The love of a mother. Yes. Oh, I feel the presence of God with this. Yes. But she went after him. Mm -hmm. And she stayed with them boys until the Lord called her home to glory. Yes. Are you helping me here yes. a few minutes? Yes. I'm telling you there's nothing, 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 nothing will ever exceed a mother's love. Yes. Never, never. I can love my children but I've got a disposition about me that sometimes I look 
And I think it jumped an entire generation. I can look back and see how peculiar that my grandpa Sparks was from time to time. And I find myself acting the thing out just the same way. And it's all right. It's all right. He was a tremendous good man. Amen. But there's some things about some of us that would be better off if we'd had a little change. Amen. Are you helping me here a few minutes? And when I find myself acting that out, then I try to do better. But there ain't nobody that reach you with a mother's love, like a, with a love like a mother can. I prayed for my children and do. But when I hear Esther, Sister Esther pray for hours, then I'm going to tell you, openly, she puts mine to shame. She puts mine to shame. She was talking about Brother Harold, Sister Betty coming back. Can somebody come get us a song real quick? I'm over this altar. Talking about them coming back to church and my mother-in-law praying for them the way that she did. And uh, talking to God on a regular basis about it. Shedding tears. And then I go back to the book of Psalms that I went through many, many times. That I said at her funeral and my mother's too. That those tears were shed and put in a vial. And then when ceremonies are going on in heaven in the presence of the Lord. And God said one day, pull Clara Oliver's vial out where she prayed for Harold and Betty. Yeah. Yeah. And that vial would come out and the aroma of those prayers came up in the, before the nostrils of God. And as he breathed in the aroma of those prayers, amen, he began to move on hearts. So I'm telling you today, Mama, your prayer is never in vain, regardless of how serious the prospect may look at the moment. It's never in vain. This is a feeble attempt to preach to you today, but it's my heart. It's what I feel deep inside of me to talk to us about today. Amen. That mother's love that reaches beyond. Only one love that reaches any further, and that's the love of God today. The love of God. Can we stand all over the house? You've got children in trouble. You've got children, grandchildren that are lost without God. Send up some prayers today with some tears behind them. And pray that God will turn some situations around in your life, in the lives of your family, in the lives of your children. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes when I get a little doubtful, Brother Mitchell, that things can change in some circumstances that I remember how your mamas are praying and that takes the doubt away because I live with her, Sister Kathy. I know how she lives. I know what she does. I know how she prays. And I know, you know, as much as I'm just being very, very transparent here, as much as I try more than I ever have in the 50 years that we've been married not to upset the apple cart and, and, and get to cause tears to come out of her eyes that I've created. Amen. And so I do my best, but sometimes my best. I find myself getting a little short about something. And maybe it might go on for a couple of days before I grasp hold of what is going on and what I'm dealing with. And I can look and I can see that sad eyes. I said, God, help me to do a better job than what I'm doing. Woo! Hallelujah! Man, I'm talking to us today. Her mama's carrying a heavy load. Yeah. A heavy load. Let's come to the altar. Let's find us a place to pray today.